In this extra example, you're asked to draw isomers. Isomers of a hydrocarbon, C6H12. What kind of hydrocarbon would C6H12 be? The saturated hydrocarbon corresponding to six carbon atoms will be C6 H2 times 6, 12 plus 2, H14. We've lost two hydrogens. And that can come about in two different ways. So, we have one double bond or one ring. Now, in order to write these isomers down, I'm going to use a shorthand. I'm not going to include any hydrogen atoms at all. I'm only going to show the carbon skeleton without hydrogen. That will make the isomers easier to comprehend and will save me a lot of drawing time. So let's begin. We have to be very systematic. Let's work first on the double bonds, that is the no ring compounds. And we will write first the linear skeletons only. We'll be very systematic. And we'll make the double bond in the most obvious place, the 1, 2. Now the 1, 3. And finally, So we have three possible linear skeletons, but if we're going to be comprehensive, we should remind ourselves that there will be geometric isomers of both the last two, cis and trans. I'm not going to draw them out. I've shown the trans isomers. You can draw the cis isomers for yourselves. Now we begin to construct the isomers that are branched at C2. And here again, we have cis and trans possibilities. Now, let's branch at C3.
once again, cis and trans possibilities. And then finally, in the branched class, there is a doubly branched molecule that I'll slip in at the bottom here. Actually, triply branched. Like so. That, I think, concludes the double bond isomers. Now let's look at the rings. And again, we'll be using the shorthand, only the carbon skeleton shown. Let's look at the six-membered ring. That one's pretty easy. There's only one six-membered ring because we only have six carbon atoms. Let's look at the five ring. That one's easy too. We draw our five carbons in the ring structure and we put a CH3 group on any one of the carbon atoms because all those positions are equivalent. However, when we get to the C4 ring, we see that there are two possibilities. We can put the two carbon extra substituents on the same, on adjacent carbon atoms, or on non-adjacent carbon atoms. Those are the only two possibilities, either adjacent or non-adjacent, because that's the only two possibilities for a four-membered ring. And then finally, we have a rather bewildering set of possibilities for a C3 ring. The most symmetrical of which will have a carbon substituent on each of the carbon atoms. Or we can have a carbon substituent of one carbon on one carbon atom and a two carbon substituent on the next. We can have a three carbon substituent And finally, that three carbon substituent can be linear, as in this case, or branched. You see that the number of isomers becomes substantial, even for such a relatively small hydrocarbon as C6H12. It becomes bewildering as we go up in the number of carbon atoms. In fact, the number increases exponentially with the number of carbon atoms. And there are many of these compounds that you can draw that have, in fact, not ever been made. Not that there's anything very exciting about making them necessarily, but it just shows the enormous, bewildering variety that comes along with the territory of organic chemistry.